Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's United Church on Sunday, September 20th, 2020. We are glad that you have chosen to join us for worship this morning, and we hope that this time offers you some peace, a sense of renewal, and, a, and the courage to go back out into the world following worship to do the things that God is asking you to do. As we gather our hearts and minds for worship, we light a candle. We light a candle to remind us that God is always with us, that the love and courage that Jesus showed is ours to share with others, and that the Holy Spirit continues to lead and guide us always. Amen. <laughs> join together in our call to worship. We have been called the salt of the earth. We have been called the light of the world. We have been called the city set on a hill. Just like Jerusalem and the people who gathered there, may we work together to open our gates, lift our hearts, and lift our voices in worship to God this day. Amen.
we come to this time of worship with many different things going on in our hearts and minds. And so it is that we take a moment to pray for ourselves and our neighbors and to feel God's presence during worship. Let us pray. In joy and in trouble, hold us, gracious God. Help us to trust in your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name always. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Nehemiah, chapter 2, verses 9 to 20a. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Then I came to the governors of the province beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent officers of the army and cavalry to me. When Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard this, it displeased them greatly that someone had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and was there for three days. Then I got up during the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. The only animal I took was the animal I rode. I went out by night to the valley gate, past Dragon Spring, and to the Dung Gate, and I inspected the walls of Jerusalem that had been broken down and its gates that had been destroyed by fire. Then I went on to the Fountain Gate and to the King's Pool, but there was no place for the animal I was riding to continue. So I went up by way of the valley by night and inspected the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate, and so returned. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, the rest that were to do the work. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in? How Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates burned? Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we may no longer suffer disgrace. I told them that the hand of my God had been gracious upon me, and also the words that the king had spoken to me. Then they said, let us start building. So they committed themselves to the common good. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they mocked and ridiculed us saying, what is this that you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Then I replied to them, the God of heaven is the one who will give us success, and we, his servants, are going to start building. Well, good morning. I thought I'd like to start a band for us. So there's nobody else around. So I'm going to do a song and then I'll be the band for the church. What do you think? Well, that's not sounding so good, is it? Well, maybe I can't play the piano very well. So let's try the ukulele. Same song. Let's see, I need a B flat. I don't know what a B flat is on, a, is on a ukulele. Does anyone hear out there? So that's kind of useless too. Well, surely to goodness, I can play a drum. So, each blade of grass, every wing, Source. Hmm. I think there's probably a better way to play the drum too. Well, 
a tambourine. I'm sure there's, let's see, where would you do the tambourine on this song? Each blade of grass, probably then, and every wing that soars. I'm kind of wondering if I've started something that I can't actually do. That I can't actually be the church's band all by myself. I think I need help. I think I need other band members to help me out. Do you guys agree? I hope you do, because I think I did a pretty poor job of all those instruments. So what I wonder is about what it is about bands and our soccer teams and our baseball teams and um, even special projects at school, if you happen to be starting at school and you get put in sort of a, a pair of, of kids to work on a project together. Nehemiah, the, the fellow we've been following now for a few weeks, couldn't do things alone either. It was important for him to find a team. He returned to Jerusalem this week. He, we finally see him in Jerusalem, and maybe you can remember that God had given him um, the, the desire in his heart to go to Jerusalem and build the wall around Jerusalem again. Well, it's a pretty big wall. It's very, very tall, and it's very, very wide, and it's not actually too long. Um, but two and a half miles or something like that, um, something in kilometers. So they, he, he goes and he knows he can't build that wall alone. And so he gets the people around him to help him. So I'm wondering if you've ever had something that you want to do that, you know, you might want to try alone at first and then you realize that you can't do this alone that you can't um, maybe play soccer alone. You, you need somebody to keep the net. You need somebody to pass the ball to. Um, you, you need another team to play against. So one of the things we can be thankful for is that God has given us a team. God has given us people around us to help us when there's things that we can't do alone. Um, maybe your teachers on online or in the classroom this week have been able to help you do different things in school that maybe you, you know, had forgotten or didn't know yet. Or maybe your grandson, um, maybe one of you helped your grandma or grandpa put an app on their phone this week. There's um, lots of ways that we can help each other and not one of us can do everything alone. So as we go out into the week, I think we need to thank God for the people who, who are on our team, the people who love and support us and will help us get the things that we want to get done or dream about doing, um, make, them, make us a success at them. So what I would um, like us to do now is say a little prayer. Living God, we thank you for this time together, and we thank you for the many people who are in our lives that can help us, the teachers, our grandparents, our parents, all those who care and love us. We ask that as we go about doing your work in this world, that we remember that we can rely on others and trust that you will be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It would be rare to see a pilot take off without the help of a ground crew. In commercial flights, there is a number of folks involved in helping a pilot and its plane get off the ground. These folks are called rampies, and they do different jobs for the plane and the pilot. Some of them drive large tankers of fuel and connect them to the plane's fuel hydrant and then to the plane's tank. Someone along the way has figured out how much fuel the plane actually needs to make it to its destination. Once the plane is all fueled up, it's taxied out to the runway by a tug or a tractor. And once it sits on the runway, there's a whole crew of people who take over the flight crew. Those who manage the plane's operation while in flight. The pilot, a co-pilot, and flight attendants. We've heard the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a good flight crew to raise a plane into the air and keep it there. We've heard about Nehemiah, his sadness when he heard about the ruined state of Jerusalem, his desire to return to the homeland of his ancestors from Persia, his patient prayer life while he waited for God to give him the perfect time to take action. And of course, the king's permission that was finally granted. In today's reading, Nehemiah has finally arrived in Jerusalem. He has traveled for three months and covered 1,450 kilometers with an entourage of military folks meant for his protection and so that others knew how important he was. So when he arrived in Jerusalem, he consequently had caught the attention of the the authorities and he wanted to lay low and not be noticed for a while. So he waits three days and under cover of dark, he goes out and checks on the wall. He goes from gate to gate, inspecting the wall inside and out, surveying the damage for himself. When he gets back to where he was staying, he speaks to those who are with him and know of his project. He shares with them not only his plan, but also that God had provided for him everything he needed in order to get to Jerusalem. And that he was sure and had faith that God would give everything that was needed for Nehemiah and the workers to complete the wall in Jerusalem. Change happens at the speed of trust. Maybe you remember that quote from the first sermon in this series from Cameron Trimble's book, Piloting Church. Clearly, those around Nehemiah trusted him because they changed their minds about the wall and rebuilding it instantly. They were good and ready to go as soon as he told them that God was with them. Despite having pressure from their enemies in the past and not being able to complete the wall and giving up, they took up the charge of rebuilding it again. Those who had to do the work, something Nehemiah wouldn't be doing, saw the value in rebuilding the wall and trusted that Nehemiah and God would be with them. It took a crew of laborers, priests, and watchmen to get the job done. This series, Come Fly With Me, uses some of the thoughts expressed by Cameron Trimble in her book. My hope is that as a team, we can take on the task of figuring out What is our wall? In other words, what can we do together that unifies us in a common purpose 
What can we name that is important enough to do even if there is opposition and challenges from others? What ministry would give us a sense of accomplishment upon completion? I don't know, do you? Maybe our Nehemiah has already seen or heard something that is calling them to act and they need us to help. Maybe our Nehemiah is still praying about what to do. Or maybe our Nehemiah is already, has already stood before us and shared their vision of what's possible if we work together. I do believe that there are possibilities and that they are endless once we are clear on who we are and what we want to do. I do believe that there will be a common vision, a ministry, or a task that will help us succeed at rising up for God. And I do believe that we have a great group of rampies and flight crew that can see us fly high and raise up for God. Like Nehemiah, we have the time to give birth and deliver great things for God. Let us trust in God and keep our eyes and ears peeled for the ministry opportunities that will draw us together and for the ways that we can fly high for God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for the faithful all over the world, that all who love you may work together to bring about your kingdom here on earth. We pray for the church, for a common vision and goals. We pray for peoples and leaders of nations, that they may be reconciled one to another in pursuit of justice and peace, not just for their own lands and people, but for all. We pray for all who suffer from prejudice, greed, or violence, 
that the heart of humanity may warm with your tenderness and work together to bring about freedom for all people. We pray for all in need by reason of flood, fire, winds of storm, that they may know the hope of your faithfulness through the common vision of love offered by you through us. We pray for the land, the sea, and the sky, that may, we may live with respect in creation and use your gifts with reverence living out the themes of our common story that reminds us that we are one with creation. We pray for all who suffer in sickness, loneliness, fear, or loss, that those whose names are in our hearts and the hearts of others may receive strength and courage from our understanding that you are always with us. God of compassion, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy now and forever as we join in the prayer made known to us through Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we thank God for the gifts we have received, may we be moved to share our gifts with others. We thank those who have continued to support the work of the church through financial gifts and those who have offered the gifts of time and talent to maintain the ministry and the property of St. Mark's during the pandemic. Your gifts are an important part of allowing us to continue to reach out in, with love into the community, part of allowing us to build and maintain a a team of volunteers and staff who are working together to fly for God. May God bless all the gifts that have been offered and bless us as we seek to build heaven on earth. Amen.
are just two weeks away from gathering in this space for worship. We have been reminded that social distancing, mask wearing, and hand sanitizing will be a part of our new protocol for worship. And as the board looked at the government requirements, we recognized the need to ensure that our sanctuary only will have 50 people in it at a time. Therefore, we are asking that those wishing to come to worship call or email to reserve your space with us on Sunday mornings. You may sit with those who are in your social bubble, but we must ensure that there's six feet between you and those who are not. Unfortunately, the need to keep our numbers to 50 means that some who wish to join us may be unable to. Please call early to ensure that you have a seat and know that you are always welcome to register for another Sunday if you miss the opportunity one week. The services will continue to be on our YouTube channel and will be streaming live every Sunday. For those who are ushering, know that we will have directions and guidance to help you as you step into your role of welcoming people during this new protocol. Please watch the newsletter and the website for up-to-date information. Again, we look forward to seeing you at worship and understand that if you may wish to continue watching us electronically while the pandemic continues. And so as we end our worship today, may we each know that the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. <laughs>